compelled by some of the pressures the vulnerable people of our society are facing. We're here not because we're against the staff who are working here, but because we're concerned at the pressures on them to sanction people to such a degree that they're perished. Some of them are committing suicide. This needs to stop. It's wrong. And it would appear that because there is no obvious murderer, people are trying their best to uh, simply ride through it. Some of the staff in here, we know, are under a lot of pressure themselves. And they're sick that the job they came into to do good for people has turned into what it is. We're going to shortly hear a list of the names of those who have died because of the attack, and it is an attack, on the poor by the people with power who have let the bankers and the criminals at the top of the hierarchy off scot-free. We're looking for another way to be human, a way where we all work together for everyone and everybody is lifted up. So thank you for listening and may you have a wonderful season of light, whether it's Hanukkah, Christmas or Diwali. Please use this time to think about how we need to approach being human together in the new year. Sorry, nobody would like, feels like to work for the sun now. By the way, my daughter just seen the lady that's been sanctioning her. I sanctioned her when she was 23 weeks pregnant and she was scared then. That is why she wouldn't come forward. That's why she lost her confidence. That is why she her baby was born five weeks early. So I just want to give her a bit of respect for doing that. Yeah. Benefits. 
So he'd cope with that condition for an awful long time and that was the last straw, like it is for a lot of people. Linda Wotton, we'll remember her too. She was 49 years old. A double heart and lung transplant patient, not a scrounger, died just nine days after the government found her fit for work after a double heart and lung transplant. Their refusal letter arriving as she lay just desperately ill in her hospital bed. Stephen Carthra, aged 55, his benefits were stopped by the DWP and with rising debts he saw suicide as the only way out of a desperate situation. People in Ashton are feeling so desperate they want to kill themselves. Some people walk past here and laugh and tell us to get a job. Loads of us here are working, some are retired. That doesn't matter. Why are we stigmatising people who do not have a job? It's not easy to get one. There aren't any. People are being made to work for free. What does that do? It takes the paid jobs away from the labour market. Eleanor Tatton, 39 years old, died just two weeks after the government found her fit for work. John Walker, aged 57, saddled with debt because of the bedroom tax, John took his own life. Brian McArdle, 57 years old, suffered a fatal heart attack the day after his disability, disability benefits were stopped. These people are not scroungers. Some of them are so ill, they can't fight this. They can't even fill forms in because their illness won't allow it. And people are calling them scroungers. That's people like our neighbours. Why are we doing it? Because the government's encouraging us to fight each other. Stephen Hill died of a heart attack one month after being found fit for work, even though he was waiting for major heart surgery. Jacqueline Harris, aged 53, a former nurse who could hardly walk, was found fit for work by Atos and her benefits withdrawn, stopped altogether. In desperation, she took her own life. David Barr, aged 28, suffering from severe mental difficulties, threw himself from a bridge after being found fit for work by Atos and failing his appeal. David Groves, aged 56, died of a heart attack the night before taking his work capability assessment. His widow claims it was the stress that killed him. Nicholas Peter Barker, we remember you too? He was 51, shot himself after being told his benefits were being stopped. He was unable to work after a brain hemorrhage left him paralysed down one side. Do you really think that these people would rather kill themselves than get a job? Or do you think they were so desperate they couldn't see another way out? Where are all these jobs that they're talking about? Mark and Helen Mullins, aged 48 and 59 years old, forced to live on £57.50 a week and make 12 mile trips each week to get free vegetables to make soup. In England, 2014, Mark and Helen both committed suicide. Richard Sanderson, aged 44, unable to find a job and with his housing benefit cut, forcing him to move, but with nowhere to go, Richard also committed suicide. Martin Rust, these are all real people like us, they're no different to us. Any one of us could be out of work tomorrow and we'd be treated like this. So a schizophrenic man who killed himself two months after the government found him fit to work. Those of us who are lucky enough to be working now should be sticking up for these people. Some of them are in the houses on their own with no food, no heating and nobody to stand up for them. That is why we're here. Craig Monk, aged 50, 43, a vulnerable gentleman and a partial amputee who slipped so far into poverty that he hanged himself. Colin Trainer, 
29 and suffering from epilepsy, was stripped of his benefits, he appealed. Five weeks after his death, his family found he'd won his appeal, as many do, but by that time they had been evicted because they've had no money for three months. Elaine Christensen, 57 years old, worried about her work capability assessment, she was subsequently found at Holderness Drain, drowned and with 10 self-inflicted wrist root wounds. These people, people who are out of work are being treated so badly that no wonder they get reactive depression, no wonder they feel like that. We've had people come up to us and just saying that us stood outside Ashton Job Centre has stopped them from taking their own lives. How sad is that? It needs more of us here and it needs more of us writing, lobbying, petitioning. Christelle and Kaja Pardo, 32 years and five months old. Pregnant, her benefits stopped. Christelle, clutching her baby son, jumped from a third floor floor balcony. That's desperation for you, that's not laziness. Mark Scott, aged 46. His DLA, disability benefits, and his housing benefits stopped and sinking into deep depression, which is a natural reaction after something like that, Mark died six weeks later. Cecilia Burns, somebody's mum, someone's daughter, found fit for work while undergoing treatment for breast cancer. She died just a few weeks after she won her appeal against the Atos decision. Chris Can, 57 years old, found dead in his home just months after being told he had to undergo a medical assessment to prove he could not work. Some of these people have been really suffering for years with mental and physical disabilities. This is the last straw for them. It's hard enough for them just to keep going without all that stress. Peter Hodgson, 49 called to see the job centre to see if he was suitable for volunteer work. Peter had suffered a stroke, a brain hemorrhage and had a fused leg. His appointment letter arrived a few days after he took his own life. Paul Wilcoxon, 33 years old, suffered with mental health problems and worried about government cuts. Paul committed suicide by hanging himself. Stephanie Bottrell, this lady got in all the newspapers. After paying £80 a month for bedroom tax, Stephanie could not afford heating in the winter and lived on tinned custard. In desperation, she chose to walk in front of a lorry. Now what did they say? No comment. She must have been ill. Sorry. Larry Newman suffered from a degenerative lung condition. So he'd be tired, he wouldn't be able to walk. His weight dropped from 10 to 7 stones. Atos awarded him zero points. He died just three months after submitting his appeal. Paul Turner, 52 years old. After suffering a heart attack, he was ordered to find a job in February. In April, Paul died from ischemic heart disease. Christopher Charles Harkness, aged 39. After finding out that the funding for his care home was being withdrawn, this man, who suffered from mental health issues, also took his own life. This is why we're here today. We've just laid a wreath at the job centre because of the government benefit cuts. We want to remember all these people that have either been forced to take their own lives or have died. Sandra Louise Moon, aged 57, suffering from a degenerative back condition, depression, and increasingly worried about losing her incapacity benefit. Sandra committed suicide by taking an overdose. Lee Robinson, 39 years old, took his own life after his housing benefit and council tax were taken away from him. David Coop, 57, 
a cancer sufferer found fit for work by Atos in 2012. David lost his sight, then he lost his hearing, then his mobility, and then his life. being called in for a work capability assessment by Atos. If anybody wants to look this up, this is a black triangle list of the dead. They have been compiling statistics on people who have died relating to benefit cuts. The government at first denied that they were investigating any of these cases. Now they've admitted that they are investigating 60 benefit related deaths. Victor Cuff, aged 59 and suffering from severe depression, Victor hanged himself after the DWP stopped his benefits. Charles Barden, aged 74. Charles committed suicide by hanging due to fears that the bedroom tax would leave him destitute and unable to cope. He'd managed for 74 years. That was the last straw for him. Ian Caress, aged 43, suffered multiple health issues and deteriorating eyesight. Ian was found fit for work by Atos. He died 10 months later, having lost so much weight that his family said he resembled a concentration camp victim. Ian Hodge, aged 30, suffered from the life-threatening illness Hughes Syndrome found fit for work by Atos and his benefits stopped. Ian took his own life. <laughs> Wayne Grimm, aged 37, severely depressed due to government cuts and the fear of losing his job. Wayne committed suicide by hanging. We're here to remember those people today. Sick and disabled people who've had their, their money just cut off. Kevin Bennett, aged 40. Kevin, a sufferer of schizophrenia and mental illness, became so depressed after his job seeker's allowance was stopped that he became a virtual recluse. Kevin was found dead in his flat several months later. David Elwyn Hughes Harris, aged 48, a disabled man who could no longer cope after his parents died, could find no help from the government via benefits. David took an overdose as his way out of his solitude. Dennis Jones, aged 58, a disabled man crushed by the pressures of government cuts, in particular the bedroom tax. Unable to survive by himself, Dennis was found dead in his flat. Sean Pilkington, aged 58, unable to cope anymore, Sean shot himself dead after receiving a letter from the DWP informing him that his ESA was to be stopped. What are people supposed to do when the tiny, tiny amount of benefits they're supposed to live on get cut off? What would you do if that happened to you? You lost your job tomorrow, you went to sign on, you were treated awfully, you were depressed, and then you're two minutes late for an appointment, they stop your money for months. What would you do? Paul, aged 51, died in a freezing cold flat after his ESA was stopped. Paul appealed the decision and won on the day that he lost his battle to live. Chris McGuire, aged 61, deeply depressed and incapable of work, Chris was summoned by Atos 
for a work capability assessment and deemed fit for work. On appeal, a judge overturned the at 